We're going to be looking at now the design of concrete elements in fire. As we've discussed previously, concrete elements typically behave quite well. They've got a lot of redundancy. Concrete is a good insulator. So in general, concrete protects the rebar, the loads are carried. But if we want to carry out a rational design on a concrete element, we're going to have a look at now on how to do that. So what I've got drawn here is a cross section of a typical concrete beam in sagging. So we've got th uh, three bars at the bottom, which are going to carry our load. And now at ambient temperature, we normally work on an effective depth from the top of our concrete section to the middle of our bars. Uh, and we call that D. But I'm going to say this, let's say this is exposed to fire all sides. So it's in bending, but there's fire all around it. It's a column in bending. So now the fire comes and affects the structure. And what happens now is as the fire affects the beam on all sides, the heat then is applied to the, the, the surface through radiation and convection and then is conducted into the section. And as the outer surface is heated up, it progressively weakens. So if we have a look at a graph of concrete strength or the reduction for concrete at some temperature T with temperature, the, the graph for concrete can be simplified to look something along these lines and down. So depending on which code you're using, at around 100 to 200 degrees Celsius, it starts losing strength. And then at around 600 degrees or so, you've lost your, um, uh, the temperature. So this is somewhere around 100 degrees Celsius, and this is somewhere around 600 degrees Celsius, depending on your, the code you are using. Now, we've got a way of approximating that on a cross section, because it's very difficult to track the strength through the whole um, section depth. So a simplified method is to track what's called the 500 degrees Celsius isotherm. So the line where everything is about 500 degrees Celsius. And what we assume is everything outside of 500 degrees Celsius has no strength. So we lose a area all the way around the outside and then everything inside of that has its full strength. And that way we can use a residual section to design it. But now that we've lost uh, material on all sides, our effective depth from the top of the compression zone to the middle of our bars now is reduced. We have a depth in fire like that. And also the effective breadth of our section reduces. We now have a reduced breadth BF. And when it comes to the design of this, as I mentioned, we have our, our section, it's in bending. So our bottom rebar is going to go into tension, top concrete is going to go into compression. So let's work out a simplified stress distribution through this. So I've got now a, a line here showing the cross section and here where my rebar is, we're going to have our rebar in tension. Uh, and then on the other side we're going to have our concrete going into compression. So now the upper section we've lost, at ambient temperature we'd have a block right up to the top, a compression block. But now that reduces in height to around there. So we have a reduced compression block like that. And this is a depth which we're going to call AF. And if we want to work out now the sum of forces, so the tension, the total tension in this is our area of steel, AS. So this is a, all three bars together is AS. And then this is multiplied by a reduced yield strength at some temperature T. So we're going to firstly need to know what is that temperature. And we can work it out from this or from different methods, or from the isotherm, say, okay, what is the temperature roughly at the middle of that bar? It's 400, 800 degrees Celsius, and that one, and that one. And we can, if needs be, get a, a weighted average, or assume a maximum across all three. There are different ways of doing it. But so we have now an area of steel times a weight, a reduced yield strength. And uh, the partial factor here is one. So there is a actual uh, partial factor. You just don't see it because it's one. And then now, we need to get the compression force in the top compression block, so that's C. And then this is the area of our um, concrete in compression, so we have some compression zone there. And that will then be AF, our height times BF, 
our width times. And then this compression block um, is about 0.85 of our cylinder strength, Fc. And uh, we then use that 0.85 Fc. There's slight variations in the 0.85 factor. Eurocode's 1 divided by 1.2 for the accidental limit state. But generally, this gives our, our compression force in our top um, remaining compression block, our tension force. And then to get the final moment, all we need to do is multiply. Let me just put the resultant, because we have some resultant here where C acts. And we need the distance between them. What I'm going to call Z, our lever arm. Uh, so that's Z. And our Z is simply the effect, the fire effective depth minus the depth of our compression block over 2. Over 2. And our moment of resistance will simply be Z times T or Z times um, C, whichever. And you can get the AF. This is the easier one to solve for. And then from that, calculate AF and the rest of the factors. So that takes us through a way of designing concrete elements that have been exposed to fire, reduced cross-section, and then designed from it. There are some ways we can modify this. In most cases, we don't have fire on all sides. So in most cases, we actually don't need to reduce the effective depth. And in a lot of cases, especially when there's a, a T-beam, this is part of a, a concrete slab, then the total the top area will not be affected. And if it's in, in hogging, so if our rebar is now at the top that we're worried about, if it's well embedded and there's a concrete slab, it won't be affected at all. So it's at its full ambient uh, strength. And then we just need to worry about the compression block down the bottom and would be the same procedure. So that takes us through the design of uh, concrete elements to fire, a rational design procedure for elements in bending. Thank you.